In early 2021, I decided I wanted to learn how to play chess. Less than two years later, I achieved a rating of 2000 in 10 minute games on chess.com, which is pretty fast progress for an adult who started completely from scratch. During this time, I was in school, I was working, and I didn't have a coach. Along the way, I was constantly improving my learning process to get the most out of my limited time. Here's what worked best for me. First of all, as with anything in life, you have to have a certain amount of passion and even obsession with chess in order to succeed. If studying or playing gives you a feeling of dread, then you'll probably find excuses not to do it. And when you do sit down to study or play, you might not be giving it your all. Of course, it feels great to win, but losing can't put you out of commission. I've been winning. I don't know what you're talking about. You have to view your losses as an opportunity to learn. For me, I reached a level where all I could think about was chess. I wanted to get better at it so bad that I set aside dedicated time just to study it. At a certain point, I was spending over three hours a day, and this was in addition to the rest of my life. I didn't quit school or work just to focus on chess. And frankly, that already might sound like a lot to some people. But it's really not so much about the number of hours, it's about what you do with the time that you do have. I was very careful to separate the types of content I was consuming about chess, whether that was watching videos or reading or playing games. There was entertainment and then there was education. Anything like watching streamers play Blitz, watching commentary, or even going through books of Grandmaster games did not count as education because it did not have a direct application to my play. So all of that was not allowed to be included in my study time. If I was going to watch videos or go through books during my study time, it was things like openings, end games, or tactical patterns. I might watch a video about an opening while playing that line out on my physical board. And that was something I could use and remember the next time I played a game. Speaking of playing games, that of course was a huge part of my study but only rapid games or slower counted in that education bucket. I still played faster games, obviously, but those were entertainment and I did not get to count that as part of my study time. I think one of the best habits I got into was playing just one or two games every day. Win or lose, I would stop there and analyze them and then move on to something else that I knew I needed to work on. That discipline stops me from falling down that rabbit hole of just one more game or play until I win. It's important to play so that you can put the things you're learning into practice, but you can't really expect long-term improvement if all you're doing is clicking next game. We go again. When it comes to analyzing games, I was really organized, especially once I got into the 14, 15, 1600 level. At the end of each week, I would go through all of my losses from that week and write down just a few notes on each game of when exactly the game slipped away from me. Often that was a pretty clear moment. And once I'd done that for a couple of weeks, it was really clear to see in that data, the patterns that started to emerge. For example, I noticed I was struggling in endgames, specifically pawn or pawn and rook endgames. So I started to dedicate more specific study time to that. This helped me so I wasn't wasting time on studying things that weren't really as relevant to my games. If I focused on what I was struggling with the most, that helped patch the holes in my play that were maybe preventing me from getting better and made my learning more efficient. I made a whole video about that why I'm losing document and I've gotten the question, why wait until the end of the week instead of doing that deeper analysis on my loss as soon as I finish playing the game when it's still fresh in my mind? The main psychological reason for that is that waiting a few days after I finish the game allows my brain to reach a level of emotional detachment from that loss. That way I can look at those losses more objectively like it's somebody else playing. So I can sort of be my own coach without feeling super emotionally connected to that game. A lot of times after a loss, you feel really upset or angry or frustrated. And so analysis can actually feel more like sort of a personal attack on yourself. A few days later, I still remembered what I was thinking during those games so I could still fix the errors in my thought process but the vibe was much more about determination to not make those mistakes again, rather than just pure frustration immediately after losing a game. One more important part of my routine was moving away from learning chess solely on a computer screen. Now, for many people, myself included for a while, this is the only form of chess that they've ever known. But there were two great things that happened when I started playing over the board. 
a sense of community, and shifting my method of learning to a more tangible one. The first one is pretty easy to understand. Once I started going to a club, I was playing against people that were actually sitting across the table from me. I also got to discuss my games with stronger players and get their perspective. The tangible learning wasn't only happening at my chess club and at tournaments, but also I started incorporating it into my study routine. Studies have found that students retain information better when they take notes using a pen and paper rather than typing. This can be applied to chess or anything else you'd like to learn simply by finding a way to make your learning more hands-on. I like to drill opening lines and practice longer calculation puzzles using my physical board. It sort of forces you to slow down and really understand the information that you're trying to take in. Plus the 3D visual element makes those neural connections even stronger in your brain. Finally, while it was really nice to get into a dedicated study routine, I also found that I needed the occasional break where I took a complete step away from chess. It helped me to reset, return with a new excitement, and also re-evaluate any parts of my study routine that weren't really working. I hope this gave you some ideas to improve the quality of your study time with chess or with any other skill. Thanks so much for watching, don't forget to subscribe, and I'll see you soon.